Hello, everybody. All right, so we're going to finish the last lesson of Chapter 1. Uh, the title of our lesson is Grouping Symbols, and we're on page 51 of the 5th grade GoMath textbook. And our essential question today is, in what order must operations be evaluated to find a solution when there are parentheses within parentheses? Okay, because we learned in our last lesson that Whatever's in a parenthesis, we have to do first. So what happens when there's parentheses within a bracket, within braces? Okay, so we'll, we're going to look at those things and we'll break it down. It's not that, we're not going to make this difficult, okay? It's, it's, it's pretty straightforward. So let's look at the unlock the problem. Mary's weekly allowance is $8 and David's weekly allowance is $5. Every week, they each spend $2 on lunch. Write a numerical expression to show how many weeks it will take them together to save enough money to buy a video game for $45. All right, so Mary makes $8 a week. David makes $5 a week. But then they each spend $2 on lunch. All right, so... They're not saving $8 a week. It's 8 minus 2 and 5 minus 2. And we have to find out how long it will take for them to save $45. All right, so underline Mary's weekly allowance. I, I went ahead and circled it. So it's just that I've been used to that, circling the key numbers. And then circle David's weekly allowance and how much he spends. All right, so... What they were wanting us to do is show the difference between Mary and David because they're going to be two different expressions. All right, so use parentheses and brackets to write an expression. You can use parentheses and brackets to group operations that go together. Operations in parentheses and brackets are performed first. All right, so step one. Let's write an expression to represent how much Mary and David save each week. So how much money does Mary save each week? Well, we know she gets $8 and she spends $2 on lunch. Well, that's just eight take away two, right? And how much money does David save each week? Well, we know he gets $5 and he also spends $2 on lunch. So how much money do Mary and David save together each week? So that expression would be Mary plus David. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so now let's write an expression to represent how many weeks it will take to save enough money for the video game. Well, we know that... <clears throat> We know that she needs 40, they need $45 together. Oops, sorry, guys. We know that she needs $45 total. No, they need $45 total. So we're going to use brackets to group the operations a second time. Okay, because we have. David and Mary that we have to include. Okay, if we only had one of them, we wouldn't need the brackets. Okay, so we have to do the parentheses first and then what's still within the bracket. So <clears throat> if I was actually solving this problem, okay, it just said write an expression so that we're, we would be done at this point. But if I was actually solving the problem, I would say 45 divide by 8, not 8 plus 2, 8 minus 2. 8 minus 2 is 6, plus David, 5 minus 2 is 3. Okay. So we did what was in the parentheses, right? And so those are gone. So now we're only left with brackets. Well, that's the same thing as a parenthesis. Okay, so we'd have 45 divide by 
6 plus 3, 9. So it would take them 5 weeks. Let's look at page 52. Evaluate expressions with grouping symbols. When evaluating or solving an expression with different grouping symbols, parentheses, brackets, and braces, perform the operation in the innermost set of grouping symbols first, evaluating the expression from the inside out. So in our last example, we had parentheses within brackets. So we're going to do the parentheses first, and then what's left inside the bracket. So let's look at this example. Juan gets $6 for his weekly allowance and spends $4 of it. His sister Tina gets $7 for her weekly allowance and spends $3 of it. Their mother's birthday is in four weeks. If they spend the same amount each week, how much money can they save together in that time to buy her a present? All right, so we know that Juan gets $6 for his weekly allowance, and he spends $4 of it. His sister Tina gets $7 for her weekly allowance and spends $3 of it. Their mother's birthday is in four weeks. All right, so we're going to write an expression using parentheses and brackets. So the four, the four represents the four weeks. So four times however much they save together, right? So we have a bracket, and then inside we have a parenthesis six take away four, because that's one, okay? I'm gonna write one here. His is six dollars allowance, he spends four. Plus, Tina, Tina earns seven dollars a week and she spent spends three dollars a week. All right, so we're going to do the innermost parentheses first. So six take away four is two, and seven take away three is four. All right, so we eliminated the innermost parentheses. Now that leaves us brackets, which are it's just another form of parentheses. So we have 4 times 2 plus 4. Well, now the 2 plus 4 represents how much they save each week. So we're going to do those brackets, and we have 4 times 6. Now we no longer have any brackets. We just have 4 times 6. So then we're going to just multiply, and we'd be left with 24. So Juan and Tina will save twenty dollars, $24 for their mother's birthday present. All right, now, what if only Tina saves any money? Will this change the numerical expression? So let's look at it. So what we're saying is we're not going to count one anymore. So all we have is four times seven take away three. Yeah, there would be no need for parentheses, I mean for the brackets then. All I would need is just the parentheses for Tina. So yes, it would change the numerical expression. So, if we're just looking at Tina, we wouldn't have to include brackets any longer. So the new expression could be written as four weeks times how much Tina saves. Okay, so we don't have two operations. All we have is what's in this parentheses. We don't have to add another person. 
All right, so let's follow the order of operations here. So we have four times, and we notice that we have braces, brackets, and parentheses. Okay, so don't get overwhelmed with this. Again, we're just going to go innermost, out. Inside, out. So the innermost parentheses are just our normal parentheses. So we're going to do the 5 minus 2. We're going to ignore the times 3 right now. Okay, because that's not, that's not in this set of parentheses. And we're going to ignore the times 2 here because it is not within the innermost parentheses. All right, so perform the operations in parentheses. 4 times 3 times 3. Well, where did they get the 3 times 3? Well, because they did the innermost parentheses first. So 5 take away 2 leaves us with 3. So I eliminated the innermost parentheses, and so now I'm left with the braces and the bracket. Times 3, okay, plus... 2 times plus 4 is 6 times 2. Okay. So we've eliminated the innermost parentheses, and now I'm left with this set of brackets and this set of brackets that I have to do before I do the last one, which would be the braces. So 4 times 3 times 3 plus 6 times 2. Again, we got the 6 because 4 plus 2. All right, now 4 times, now we're left with these brackets and the braces. So again, still do the innermost section first. So 3 times 3 is 9, and 6 times 2 is 12. So now we've simplified the innermost parentheses or brackets in this case, and now we're only left with the final braces. And so we're going to do what's inside that parentheses. So 4 times 9 plus 12 is 21. 9 plus 12 is 21. And now we're going to multiply. 21 times 4. 4 times 1 is 4 1s. 4 times 2 tenths is 8 tenths. So 84. All right, so again, <clears throat> let's look at this one. We have 32 divided by 3 times uh, the product of 3 times 2 plus 7. Take away the difference of 6 and 4 plus 7 more. So we have 3 sets of grouping symbols, 3 sets of parentheses basically. So which one is the innermost parentheses? These are the innermost parentheses, right? Then the brackets, then whatever's left inside the brace. So perform the operations in parentheses. 32, that's not in parentheses. So 3 times 2 is 6 plus 7. 6 minus 4, 2, plus 7. So we eliminated the innermost parentheses. Now we have this next set of grouping symbols. So we're going to do those first. So now I'm going to put those. I need to do those. So 6 plus 7, 13. Take away the sum of 7 and 2, which is 9. Okay, so we eliminated the second brackets, or second set of grouping symbols. And now we're left with the final, or the outermost, grouping symbols. So we have 32 take away the difference of 13 and 9. 13 take away 9 is 4. All right. Now we have no more grouping symbols. We just have a division problem. 32 divided by 4 would leave us 8. All right. 
So let's practice some. Page 53. Number one. 12 plus the difference of 15 and 5 plus the difference of 9 and 3. So we have to do what's inside the innermost parentheses first. We have two grouping symbols. We have the innermost parentheses and we have brackets. So we're going to simplify the parentheses first. So 15 take away 5 gives us 10. 9 take away 3 is 6. Okay, so once we do what's inside the parentheses, we no longer need that parentheses symbol. So we have 10 plus 6 now. And that's within the second grouping symbol. Because we didn't do anything with this operation here. Again, if, if I only had this, I don't have one grouping symbol. I wouldn't have um, two sets. So we have 12 plus the sum of 10 and 6. So we have to do what's inside this grouping symbol, the brackets first, and 10 and 6 is 16. Well, by adding what's inside the brackets, we've simplified those and we, now we don't need them. Okay, because there is no operation. We did 10 plus 6, and that gave us 16. Now we're just left with 12 plus 16. That's 16 plus 12. So 6 and 2 is 8 ones. 1 10 plus 1 10 is 2 tens. So we should get an answer of 28. All right, number 2. <clears throat> we have 5 times the difference of 26 and 4 minus the sum of 4 and 6. Okay, so we have this operation inside the parentheses. We have this operation inside this set of parentheses. And then we have to do the subtraction after doing those two parentheses. So we are going to have 5 times, and we're going to write the bracket, okay, because we're not going to eliminate that bracket. We're going to eliminate what's the innermost parentheses. So 26 take away 4, 26 take away 4 is 22, minus 4 and 6. 4 plus 6 is 10. And we're going to close the bracket. Okay. So we still have one operation left within this second grouping symbol. So we're going to have to do what's in there now. So 5 times... 22 take away 10. 22 take away 10. Well, that's something we should be able to do in our head, but if not, 2 take away nothing is 2, and 2 tens take away 1 ten is 1 ten. So we don't need this bracket anymore, right? Because I'm simplifying that. Okay, so 5 times 12. Well, 5 times 10 is 50. 55, 60. 5 times 12 is 60. 5 times 2 ones is 10 ones. Regroup that as 110 and 0 ones. 5 times 110 is 5 tens plus the regroup 10, 6 tens. Okay. Number 3. We have 36 divided by the difference of 18 and 10 take away the difference of 8 and 6. So again, we have two sets of grouping symbols. We're going to do the innermost grouping symbol first, which is 18 take away 10. So we're going to have 36 divide by 18 take away 10 is 8 minus 8 take away 6 is 2. Now we have our second set of grouping symbols we have to do. So it's going to be 36 divided by the difference of 8 and 2, which is 6. And now we just do the division. 36 divided by 6, we know that that is 6. That's just a basic math fact. Number 4. We have 4 plus the difference of 16 and 4 plus the difference of 12 and 9. So I see brackets and I see parentheses. We're going to do the innermost parentheses first. 
So we have 4 plus whatever operation we have left after doing the parentheses. So 16 take away 4 is 12 plus 12 take away 9. 12 take away 9 is 3. So now we have addition still left within our second set of grouping symbols. So we have 4 plus what is 12 plus 3? 12 plus 3 is 15. And now we just have addition. 15 and 4 more is 19. Number 5. 24 take away the difference of 10 and 7 plus the difference of 16 and 9. Okay, so how many grouping symbols do we have? We have the outer bracket and we have the inner parentheses. So do the innermost first. So we have 24 take away, 10 take away 7 is 3, plus 16 take away 9, that's 7. And so we have one operation left, we still have to add 3 plus 7. So 24 take away 10. We should be able to do that problem in our head as well, but we can also rewrite it. 4 take away nothing is 4, and 2 tenths take away 1 ten is 1. So we get 14. All right, number 6. 3 times the difference of 12 and 8 times 2 plus the difference of 11 and 9 times 3. So now we see we have 1, 2, 3 grouping symbols. Okay, we, we, no need to panic. We just do the innermost symbol first. So what's, what's furthest in? The braces? No, that's on the out. That's the furthest out. Then the bracket. And then the parentheses. So we're going to do the parentheses first. Okay, so we're going to have 3 times. Okay, we're going to be left with these two because right now I'm going to simplify the what's inside the parentheses. All right, so 12 take away 8 is 4 times 2. So what did we do? Okay, I didn't eliminate the brackets. Because the operation within the brackets was multiplication. I simplify what was inside the innermost parentheses, 12 take away 8, and that gave me 4. Now I have to do the other side, and that's going to be 11 take away 9, which is 2, times 3. Closed brace. Now, we have two grouping symbols left. What's the innermost? The brackets. Okay, so let's do the brackets now. So we're still going to be left with the brace when we're done because we're eliminating the innermost grouping symbol. 4 times 2, 8, plus 2 times 3, 6. Okay, so now we've eliminated the brackets and the innermost parentheses. Now we're just left with what's inside the braces, which is just addition. Okay, so 3 times 8 plus 6, 14. What is 14 times 3? 3 times 4 ones is 12 ones. Rewrite that as 110 and 2 ones. 3 times 110 is 3 tens plus the regroup 10. Four tens, so forty-two. All right, number seven. Use symbols. Write the expression two times eight plus twenty. Take away, take away twelve. Divide by six, with parentheses and brackets two different ways so one value is less than 10 
and the other value is greater than 50. So less than 10. Well, let's see. I'm just doing some math here in my head. And so 2 times 8, that would be 16, right? 16 plus 20 is 36. 36 take away 12 is 24. And 24 divided by 6 is 4. So that would be less than 10. So what would that look like? So let's write this out. 2 times 8 plus 20 minus 12 divide by 6. So the last thing I wanted to do was divide by 6. So I don't want that inside the grouping symbols. What do I want to do? Well, <clears throat> let's see. I want to put brackets around those because I want to divide by 6 at the end, right? So I want to do whatever's all in here first. Now, I want to do... I want to do 2 times 8, which would give me 16... Plus 20 take away 12 is 8. 16 and 8 is 24. Yeah, okay. So this answer would be 4. Now we need something that's going to give us something greater than 50. Well, all right, so what if we do this? What if we leave the 2 on the outside and let's multiply whatever else is left? So let's see. We're taking the 2 on the outside, so let's go 8 plus 20. That's 28, right? Minus 12 divided by 6. That's going to be 2, right? 28 minus 2 is 26. 26 plus 26 is 52. So that, that would work. That would be greater than 50. Okay, well you, again, well you might have to guess and check a couple times. But, <clears throat> so brackets. So I'm going to do what's inside the parentheses first. 8 plus 20 is 28. Take away 12 divided by 6. 12 divided by 6 is 2. 28 take away 2 is 26. 26 times 2, 52. All right, so our two answers, or two possible answers, 2 times 8 plus the difference of 20 and 12 within brackets, and divide that by 6. So this is 16 plus 8, which is 24, and 24 divided by 6 is 4. And our second one is 2 times the sum of 8 and 20, take away 12 divided by 6. And we said that would give us 52. All right, number eight. Wilma works at a bird sanctuary and stores bird seed in plastic containers. She has three small containers that hold eight pounds of bird seed each and six large containers that hold 12 pounds. Each container was full until she used four pounds of bird seed. She used four pounds of birdseed. 
she wants to put some of the remaining bird seed into 30 bird feeders that can hold two pounds each. How much bird seed does she have left? Show the expression to show the expression you use to find your answer. Well, let's see. Three small containers, and they each hold eight pounds. So I'm gonna write that as small container. And then we have six large containers that each hold 12 pounds. I'll write that as large containers. And then she used four pounds. So would you agree that if I add the small container plus the large containers, that would tell me how much bird seeds she has? Okay. And then we need to take away four pounds. Okay, because so that's the bird seed she used. So minus four pounds. And then she wants to put that, put the remaining seed, 30 bird seeders, and each of those holds two pounds. I'm going to put this as bird feeders. Okay, so all I'm doing is trying to keep track of all the different information there. So we start with three containers with eight pounds each and six large containers with 12 pounds each. Then we're going to use four pounds. And then she's going to put another two pounds in each of 30 bird feeders. So how much does she have left? So these two are amounts that we're taking away from the bird seed. So couldn't I, in a sense, bracket those and bracket those? So this is how much she has, and this is how much is being taken away. All right, so let's see. Three times eight plus six times twelve will tell us how much she has to start with. And we have to minus whatever's being taken away. Four plus thirty times two. So we're going to need a third set of brackets. So do show the expression you use to find your answer. All right. So we have three sets of grouping symbols. We need to do the innermost first. So we're going to be left with the brace and the bracket. Three times eight is 24. Six times 12. I know six times 10 is 60. 6 times 11 would be 66. 6 times 12 would add 6 more to 66, 72. Okay, so we eliminated the parentheses. So this is how much she has. Take away 4 plus, she's going to put 2 pounds in 30 bird feeders. So 2 times 30, that's 30 plus 30, that's 60. Okay, so the amount she has, the amount she uses. So now let's eliminate the brackets. We'll be left with the braces. 24 plus 76. That's 96 minus 4 plus 60 is 64. So she is left with 96 take away 64. 
6 take away 4 is 2. 9 tenths take away 6 tenths is 3. 32 pounds left. All right, and 54, number nine. Dan has a flower shop. Each day he displays 24 roses. He gives away 10 and sells the rest. Each day he displays 36 carnations. He gives away 12 and sells the rest. What expression can you use to find out how many roses and carnations Dan sells in a week? All right, so... He displays 24 roses, gives away 10, sells the rest. Each day he displays 36 carnations, gives away 12. All right. What information are we given? Well, we're given the number of roses and carnations each day. and the number of each that he gives away. All right, what are we being asked to do in this problem? Well, what we're being asked to do is the question, right? It says, write an expression, or what expression can you use to find out how many roses and carnations Dan sells in a week? Okay, so how many roses and carnations he sells each week? What expression shows, shows how many roses Dan sells in one day? Because we have roses and carnations, right? So he doesn't sell all of his roses. He starts with 24 roses, right? And he gives away 10. Okay, so and then he's, he'll sell the rest. What expression shows how many carnations Dan sells in one day? Again, he doesn't sell all of the carnations. He starts with 36, and he gives away 12. So we have those two things, and it wants to find the total that he sells each week. Okay, so this is just one day. Okay, so write an expression to represent the total number of roses and carnations Dan sells in one day. So the roses would be the difference of 24 and 10 plus the difference of 36 and 12. Okay, if we're getting confused, we can call those are the roses, right? And these are the carnations. Now we have to account for the, the week. So this is one day and we need seven days because it's seven days is a week, right? So seven times 
24, take away 10, plus 36, take away 12. Okay, so the brackets here on the outside are a way of saying, okay, I, I want you to figure out how many roses and carnations he sells in one day. After you've done that, I want you then to multiply by seven. All right. So that's our, our expression. And number 10. A gift shop had 500 coloring pencils. The shop sold three sets of 20 coloring pencils, six sets of 12 coloring pencils, and 10 sets of 18. Write a numerical expression to show how many coloring pencils are left. Evaluate the numerical expression, expression using order of operations. Show your work. So we have three things we got we have here. We have three sets of 20. We have six sets of 12. And we have 10 sets of 18. So these are all the different sets of pencils that were sold, right? Well, we know we started with 500. And we're going to take away however many he sold, or the gift shop sold. We know they sold three sets of 20, plus six, six sets of 12, plus 10 sets of 18. So if we do figure out how many sets of coloring pencils they sold all together, or how many coloring pencils they sold all together, we would subtract from 500. So let's start with the innermost parentheses. 3 times 20 is 60. 20, 40, 60. Plus 6 times 12. 6 times 12, we just did 72. 6 times 10 is 60. 6 times 2 is 12, 60 and 12 is 72, plus 10 times 18. Well, 18 times 1 is 18, and it's going to be followed by 1, 0. All right, so we eliminated all the parentheses, and now we can figure out how many they actually sold. So we have 500 we started with, and they sold 180 plus 72 plus 60. 2 plus nothing is 2. 8 and 7 is 15, plus 6 more is 21. And 200 plus 100 is 300. So they sold 312 color pencils. So how many are left? 500 take away 312. I can't take two for nothing, so I'll, and I can't borrow from the tens, so I'm going to trade 100 for 10 tens, and then I can take one of the tens and give it to the ones. 10 take away two is eight. Nine tens take away one ten is eight tens. And four hundreds take away 100 is, uh, 400 take away 300 is 100. So 188 color pencils left. So again, our numerical expression was 500, because that's how many they had. Take away the first set, which was 3 times 20, plus the other set of 6 times 12, and the set of 10 times 18. So we need to figure out each of those to figure out how many uh, color pencils were sold. Once we've done each of those sets, we can add them together and figure out that they sold 5, 312 
color pencils. And 500 take away 312 is 188. Okay. All right, so that's it for our discussion of Chapter 1. So until next time, I will see you soon.